So another way you could handle your fraction of delta t, if you didn't want to go through the whole interpolation, is to create create a pool. So what you'd do is you'd enter your loop, you'd bite through your large delta t with the small dt trunks, and at the very end, any fraction you would just ignore. You'd then draw, and then your large delta t calculation would automatically just grow, as, as it is at the moment with existing code to fill the time to preserve this frame time. And you'd store your fraction of a delta t into a pool that you'd pass in and add on to the large delta t that you've just passed in from the last calculation. And then you'd bite through it in small delta t steps. And again, if you have a fraction, you'd pass that on to the next loop and calculate your delta t sleep to preserve this frame time and so on. And that's what I'm gonna show you to do, show you how to do. And if you open up uh, your game loop 004 layout, we're gonna need a new variable. I'm just going to call that dt pool. We're going to initiate the pool to zero at the beginning. And the magic is going to happen inside our update loop. Once we've had the big, so we've had the delta t being passed in here, we're going to add the fraction of from the pool onto it. So at this level, we're going to say delta t is equal to delta t plus the dt pool. And then we're going to empty the pool because we've just added those values onto uh, our delta t. And once we've looped through each byte out of our large delta t, we're going to have something left over. So whatever is left over, we're now going to assign that to our pool. And that is it. Let's hit save and run. That would be this controller. And that's worked as well. So that brings us to the end of our game loop sub tutorial. At this point, you have everything you need to make uh, very nicely timed games. Thanks for watching, and I'll continue the series with a new topic in the next tutorial.